Okay, so I've returned from outside with my tubes and I'm ready to take a look at the results. Now, we have to remind ourselves first, what kind of tubes are we looking at? We know that I have here test tube number one where I have spinach in it and it has not been placed in a photo blocker. I have test tube number two inside of a photo blocker which also has some spinach inside of it. Then I have test tube number three which received the same kind of yellowish or slightly yellowish colored phenol red that the tubes one and two did. And then we had our original mix of phenol red, which was definitely on the very pink side in tube number four. If we take a look at tube number four, we can still see that nice pink there. And I can hold up tube number three next to it to ensure that they are indeed still different colors, just as they were when we first placed them in. Now I wanna take a look at some of my other tubes. Let's go ahead and take a look first at tube number one. Tube number one here looks nice and pink. Well, how do I know for sure? I want to compare that to tube number three, and I can see that tube number one definitely is more pink than tube number three, and I can compare it to tube number four, which started out pink. And we actually have those about the same coloration. So we recognize that tube number one has gone from a little bit yellow to something definitely more along the lines of being pink. Now again, why does that color change occur? We know that phenol red is a pH indicator, and when we blew CO2 into it, which was gonna make it more acidic, we were able to change it from pink down towards a yellowish coloration. So if it's gone back towards pink, that seems to indicate that we've had a change in the CO2 concentration. We might have to ask ourselves, how would we change the amount of CO2 within a tube? Let's also take a look at tube number two. I'm gonna hold that up against tube number one. Remember, they started out the same color and they are definitely not the same color right now. So what we know is that these didn't end up producing the same results, that we saw a change in color in tube one, whereas tube number two, if anything, seems like it actually got more yellow than it was initially. So that's kind of an interesting and weird result. We know that tube number two was out in the sun with all the other tubes, but it was inside a photo blocker. So it wasn't able to actually receive the energy from the sun as far as the light energy that's going to fuel photosynthesis. But we saw it actually turn yellow. Now, initially our phenol red turned yellow when we blew into it. If that's going to happen, we know that we were adding carbon dioxide. This turned even more yellow that seems to indicate that it got more carbon dioxide. I didn't go outside and blow into it, so where did that CO2 come from? So that's essentially all of our results. We've seen all of our tubes. We saw a change to pink in tube number one, a change to yellow in tube number two. We saw the three and four stay just as they were initially. The only thing we have left is to take a close look here at tube number one and see if we can find any bubbles forming. So we can kind of maybe take a close look. We can see some on the underside of some of those leaves there. If we do see bubbles, we wanna ask ourselves, where would those bubbles come from? Which part of our process could potentially produce new gases as these leaves are undergoing photosynthesis?